It happens frequently that men are busy telling each other how good they have done. I hear it in frequent conversations I have with the women I coach. I heard one woman executive tell me with, in, um, in despair one day. She said, you know what, Deborah, I have, I'm so sick of these board meetings. She was the only woman at an executive meeting. And she said the first half an hour is taken up by the blokes telling each other how many problems they had to fix that week. She said, half an hour. (laughs) So we chatted and we talked about some strategies. And what she decided to do was to go to the CEO and say, you know what, John, have you noticed how long it takes us to get to the the, um, agenda? We are spending, there is half an hour that's spent on telling everyone how many problems we've had that week. And it's almost as if the person with the most problems wins. He went, oh, I haven't noticed that. He said, wouldn't it be much better to be focusing on the solutions and what solutions we've come up with in the last week, which, of course, meant that she had a much more favourable story to tell. So she managed to turn it around by helping her CEO realise, because he was playing the game without realising it was happening. A lot of this is unconscious, unintentional. Yeah, it happens. And if we are not participating, if we're silent... Others can get confused and think that we are not contributing, we are not achieving. Whereas in our heads we're going, oh my God, do we have to go through this performance again? (laughs) The fact is that typically the performance is happening and if we're not participating, we're going to be losing by default. We have to get better at playing the game until our organisational structures have systems and processes, have a level of awareness, which means they don't occur anymore. And in your country, just like my country, I think we've got a way to go. So we need to get better at speaking up. If we think about how men and women speak, I'm not going to talk about this too much because Rasima spoke about this in her session, but in terms of the, what, the differences, men have the advantage. They are much better at being direct, at sounding authoritative, at at reporting facts and figures, at being seen as the expert, as as being the devil's advocate. Men explore ideas often by challenging each other. When women are challenged, quite often we go, oh, gosh, maybe that idea is not so good. Maybe that person's opinion is better than mine. We get confused by it and quite often we back down. We need to get better at defending our ideas and our opinions and speaking up. In addition, <clears throat> women are, com- are also competing with ourselves. We have this internal dialogue that often happens in our head, <laughs> which goes something along the lines of, oh, gosh, I don't know if I should speak up right now. I don't know if I'm good enough. I don't, know. I don't want to be seen like an idiot. I don't want to be... what if they don't believe me, something bad will happen. We have an internalised dialogue that also gets in the way. Does anybody have anything that's not useful happening in their head sometimes? (laughs) Only a few people? (laughs) Yeah. Yeah. I want to really encourage you women to actually start. By the end of the session, I'd like everyone to sort of take up more space. It's going to be really useful practising this stuff. Which is my next slide. I often hear from um, women, you know, I don't want to act like that. I don't want to become like that. I hear that women um, from my clients and from many of the um, workshops that I conduct, that women tend to think, well, you know, for me to go into the executive position, not only do I have to give up my life, but I also have to play those games and politics, and I don't want to do that. Now, I'm going to advocate that we don't actually have to change who we are, but we do need to understand the rules of the game so that we can either play the game, choose to change the rules, like my executive friend, but not lose by default. We need to practice 
We need to practice doing things differently. We need to practice taking a risk, stepping outside our comfort zones because we're worth it, because our communities need us, because our organisations need us. We've heard over the last two days how important it is to get a diverse perspective in the decision-making rooms of our organisations, of our governments, of our communities. So sometimes that means we have to do something that's scary. But the good news is that the more we practice doing something scary, the easier it becomes. And if we adopt the mindset that it's actually only a game, it becomes easier. If we think about that Deborah Tannen clip when those little boys in a tunnel, in a, a pipe, were clearly lying through their teeth. It's a game. It's not personal. We need to detach from the message that goes, oh, if I say something that's not exactly true, if I speak up and do something scary, something bad's going to happen. So if I want to encourage you, and I'm going to ask you to practice, which might be risky <laughs> for, for everybody, <laughs> um, to think about how you would respond to the following statements. The first one, you look tired today. Are you all right? The second one, I'm sorry you didn't get that promotion. And the third one, which actually happened to me, is, oh, that was a great presentation. That suit looked really good on you. In a workplace, if people are evaluating your response unconsciously, unintentionally, looking for whether you are better or worse than they are, and we inadvertently respond in a way that we've been conditioned, which is through the connection lens, then what we are doing is we are putting ourselves in a one-down position, which means people can get confused and to think that, Oh, so she's not really that good. So, for instance, the first one, you look tired today, are you all right? If you come in to work and you respond to that going, tired's not the word for it. I was up all night with the baby. I don't know how I'm going to get through this day, let alone get that presentation finished. And someone overhears that, and you've just said you don't know how you're going to get through the day or get that presentation finished. That is an unconscious message that's being picked up and heard, and is evaluated, and has put you in a position of not being as good as someone who might respond differently. I'm going to give you two minutes to come up with an alternate response to these statements. I'd like you at your tables to play a game. The person who can big note themselves the most, who can respond to these questions as though you were a bloke, wins. Okay? You've got two minutes to come up with three responses to these. Okay? And then I'm going to ask you to share them, and the person who gets the best response wins. Okay? It's a game.